All right. So in this demo, I will show you where we start. So typically, you can do a tour here on the new ribbon interface for those of you who are familiar to the V8i SS6 version, previous one, uh, or you can take lessons on your own. So if you go to Quick Start Lessons, it opens a PDF uh, with a few lessons. So similar to the workshops that we're going to be doing, uh, if you feel like you still need a little bit more, uh, you can do those lessons or I'm going to make that come back up. Where did it go here? Um, so you can take the tour to learn the ribbon interface or take the quick start lessons or you can create a new project or open an existing one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. Um, so, when we're working on these workshops, I will refer to this white area in the middle as the drawing pane. Uh, this over here above the drawing pane is the um, combo box. We call it that for some reason. Um, when you have several scenarios, you can simply uh, choose which scenario you're going to be working on from this drop down menu. Uh, you can zoom extents here do all your zooming or panning right here. Um, and then on the left, by default, you have element symbology, which is where we do color coding and annotation on our elements. Uh, and typically here, you would have the background layers. Uh, we won't be using it for this, but I like this Bing map uh, sometimes uh, let me open up my Bing map key. If you're using the latest release, you don't have to type this in. But if you're using the version that I'm using, <laughs> you do. And uh, basically with this, you can use Microsoft's Bing maps as a background for any project, whether it's a file that you had already created and you're just going to put this as a background or where it's a new file. So I'm going to do one control point for now and I'll show you what that means. So this can take you anywhere in the world. I mean the resolution is really good so when you're working with this it's nice to show your clients uh, this kind of an interface. Um, and you can always turn off the background or you can um, Yeah, simply hide it or use other kinds of backgrounds. You know, it's just that I like the aerial uh, for a graph. Now, now, if you had already built a model, you can use a one or three control points, which is basically saying, okay, the the x and y coordinates of my model, meaning my nodes and pipes, etc. These are x and y coincide with this latitude and longitude uh, for a particular point. So if you know where your treatment plant is, for example, uh, you can use that as your reference point on both. And that way you can make everything um, be completely or superimposed perfectly or as perfect as you can. Um, so since this is a new one, I'm going to do a layout. Um, you can grab this layout tool from the home tab or you can go to the layout tab and pick your individual components. I'm going to pick this one. You see by default it has a manhole. So I'm going to say that I will lay a um, manhole from here to here, here to here. And this is going to become my connection point to the design that I'm doing. So this I will represent as an outfall. And say done. So that's how simple it is to lay out elements. Now, um, I mentioned something in the presentation which we don't have in the workshop. Um, so I'll take this opportunity to show you how it works. 
uh, the property connections. So if you wanted to do a small design for a little commercial area or a new development, uh, you could in fact input your homes as this applies mostly to um, sewer systems, right? When you enter a load here, because most of the time for um, storm collection systems, we don't really do individual houses, uh, but you could do something like that. So in case you guys do that kind of work, I wanted to show you what that's all about. And, um, you know, for a storm system, um, you know, you would really not use this unless there's a known flow that you know is in addition to that. But if this were a um, sewer system, you could say how much um, flow is being generated at each individual home. So I just wanted to show that that is a possibility. And if you did have that, um, you can just connect it with a lateral there and a tab here. So by default, it picks that. And it attaches those. I'm going to turn the background layers for a minute. Um, so there, you can have that if you guys use uh, water jams, sewer jams. You can use something similar to what I've done. Property connections, laterals, and taps. Okay, I'm just going to turn, I'm going to undo these since it won't really be more applicable to this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be a catchment. So I'm going to use, you know, like half the street because, you know, they slope in the other direction. So I don't know, maybe, uh, in fact, there is a better tool than what I'm just doing. It's a, this is a, a demo simply. Um, but here you can tell that it can already uh, figure out the area. So it's using a scaled area and it's telling me 3.28 acres. Uh, right there, or I can say, no, nah, I want to specify the area. This is different value. So you can do that um, entirely up to you. If you're using terrain models, which allow you to bring a terrain model file. And the nice thing about using this, to be the reason I'm showing it, is that you can do catchment delineation. Um, there's this option here called Run Catchment Delineation. So once you bring a terrain model and it is active, uh, it can help you delineate uh, your individual catchments. Um, in this particular example, I don't have that, so I just wanted to bring it up. But basically what you do is you end up uh, creating all your catchments, then you associate each of your catchments and say, okay, this um, area, this charges to um, here. And I noticed that I have a manhole. If you don't want a manhole, if you want to have actually a catch basin, you can say, oops, I made a mistake. So you go over here, you grab the catch basin, place it right up above it, on top of it, and it says, do you want to morph that manhole into a catch basin? <coughs> and in that case, you would simply say, yes. So I'm going to morph all these guys. And in fact, you know, if you want to move things to where they would actually be, you can do that. Oops. You know, I realize you might have something more complicated here, which is, this is again just for simplicity. You could have an inlet here and another here, and you can have the gutter. We're going to look <coughs> at, a, at a more complete example, but this is just to show you how you um, enter the information. Uh, so you specify again where this is going to discharge. And remember what was the other thing that we said we had to specify for a catchment? We know the area. It told us it's 3.28 acres. Um, we need to specify time of concentration and we need to know, we need to tell it what C coefficient um, we have to use. <clears throat> so here's where we input the runoff coefficient. So for here you could say, uh, you know, it's kind of a combination of things. And if you don't want to be really particular and add 20 sub areas to this block, you can say, okay, I'm going to assume a rational C of um, 0 0.7. If you want it more complicated, you can go here and do each sub area, but I'm not going to 
So I'm simply going to say 0.6, let's say. And for the time of concentration, I am going to use one of these methods so you figure out which methodology you like. And you input all your variables <coughs> and it calculates that or you can simply say no I've already done that work myself and I know it's um, 0.2 hours so like 12 minutes and, and that's it so we've input the C value we know the area we know the time of concentration now the other um, component to the hydrology of this is the storm data so here we can say, okay, I want to input my own IDF table um, or from an equation I want you to build it. So these are all the like Australian and UK values you probably never use. Or you could import it from a library if you had already uh, created one. So this is a sample one that comes with the software, so I will use that. And it gives me a 2, 5, and 10 year storm event. And um, so now I could run the hydrology. Uh, you can also do validation. If I were to validate, it's going to tell me that I didn't input the invert elevations correctly and all that. So let's take a look. And so it says, uh, you know, we found some errors. And right here, it tells me everything that uh, has gone wrong. So I said, you know, invert elevation is zero for everything. So you know, if I were to create a profile, let's take a look. Um, here. So here. So you can see that everything is zero. I have everything set to zero and up to one foot. So it probably means that my uh, pipes have exactly that diameter. <laughs> So let's see. Yeah, 12 inch diameter. So that's why, you know, once once we input the right diameters, um, but that's going to be the exercise. So I'll let you guys uh, play with that. Um, so yeah, you would individually make your changes or if you had it in a GIS file, you would import that or in a CAD file, trying to make the manual work as little as possible, right? If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.